Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. I suspect that we are now in the Diana divorce era. So back in April of this year, it was announced that Charles Barkley and Gail King were going to be launching some type of show in the fall. Riding off the popularity of the royal family, they are considering calling the show King Charles. <laughs> it sounds quite cheesy, but this is what is rumored. It is also rumored that Gail King was looking to have Meghan on as the first guest. The media outlets that were pushing this out traditionally push propaganda for Meghan Markle. So Marie Claire is a perfect example of questioning, is this something that maybe Meghan put out there? Or is it possible that Gail King put this out there to test the waters to see if there would be interest? You see, Gail King is not going to have Megan on the show unless she's going to be dropping some type of bombshell or news about either Prince Harry or the royal family. Megan right now has absolutely nothing to talk about. She has no projects in the works, possibly maybe the TIG, but is that going to be enough to draw an audience to a show that is just starting? No. I certainly don't see Oprah wanting to sit down again with these two fools unless she's going to try and clear the air and set Meghan and Harry straight. I don't see it happening. So likelihood, Gail King will get the sloppy seconds to deal with whatever bombshell or lies that will come out of this woman's mouth if this does happen. So let's back up a second and talk about why I believe that we are in this Diana divorce error. Megan's lifelong ambition is to become Diana 2.0. In the beginning, when people really didn't know anything about Meghan Markle, and this is before her best friend spoke out, saying that she wanted to be Princess Diana 2.0, nobody really noticed what she was wearing to make any type of correlation that there was evidence of copying Diana and trying to acclimate to be this Diana 2.0. But soon word got around and people started to take notice that every outfit practically emulated in some form the late Diana, Princess of Wales. And then it got really weird once we started to see photos like this of Meghan posing prior to entering into the royal family. We then began to see this hard push by the Sussex PR team comparing Meghan to Diana and forcing that narrative down our throats. And over time, the efforts just became incredibly creepy. When we combine all the visuals and then finding out how she ensnared Harry by wearing his mother's perfume and making it appear that she's this damsel in distress that is being stalked by all these paparazzi. Meanwhile, in the back end, she's setting all that up and manipulating Harry to think that history really is repeating itself. It's quite sick how Meghan psychologically took advantage of Harry's trauma in order to lock it down and get to this point to where she can cash out. You see, Meghan had no intention on staying in the family. Her goal was to reach Diana 2.0 in where the latter part of Diana's life was. The more glamorous, the red carpets, the charity galas. That was the life that she thought she was going to be living in the royal family. But that was a wake-up call to her, and she recognizes that she wants Diana's life after the marriage. So getting a fat payout and then going off around the world with billionaires, hanging out on yachts and so forth, and, you know, c'est la vie. It's so twisted, though, that she is making Harry go through these psychological exercises in thinking that she is being chased by paparazzi like Diana was towards the last years of her life. When Charles and Diana separated, we saw a lot of photos of Diana going out, doing everyday things such as shopping or going to the gym. And a lot of times we saw her in some non-traditional clothing, like we'd see Diana go out with biker shorts and a sweatshirt on her way to the gym. Or in this upper left-hand corner, you see Diana wearing cowboy boots with sweatpants and a I want to say that's a blazer and baseball cap. Like, none of that makes any sense, just like the photo of Megan next to it. When you look at the color schemes of the other three recent photos of Megan, you recognize that there are similarities to what Diana had wore 
back then when she was in her separation divorce era phase. When you look back at the 1995 interview that Diana did with Martin Bashir, you realize that this is the script that Meghan and Harry, specifically Meghan, has been following this whole entire time. Let me point out a couple things that seem to be foreshadowing at this moment. We've all seen recently how Meghan has been making herself look sick on purpose and that's for a reason to make people speculate whether she is on the verge of having a mental breakdown or you know is she have some type of eating problem since she's lost so much weight and she's going to bring mental health back into focus and use it as a pity play as she did back in 2021 on oprah and she's going to reveal just like diana did that she has some type of eating problem and here's her chance to blame the media for doing this to her She's going to blame us as well as the royal family for this mental breakdown. We all have started to see the articles that have been trickling out about Meghan suffering alone because of all the backlash that she has been receiving over the last several weeks from all of Hollywood, the racist UK media, and then all those single purpose hate accounts who have an opinion that she doesn't like. And Harry will be blamed because he didn't protect her. She's definitely going for the pity play, but she's also going to hone in on something that she talked about in the Netflix mockumentary, that she just wanted to make everyone proud. And what I can see her doing here is another woe is me story that nobody appreciated any of the work that I did. And that's when we're going to go into the failure of Spotify and blaming them for not giving her the resources. And look how she put together this 12 episodes and, you know, they didn't help me and blah, blah, blah. Diana was asked, when you say you were never given any credit, what do you mean? And she replies, well, anything good I ever did, and nobody ever said a thing, never said, well done, or was it okay? But if I tripped up, which invariably I did, because I was new to the game, a ton of bricks came down on me. Now picture Megan in this situation by saying, yeah, you know, I helped my husband at Invictus Games. And the only thing that the UK media wanted to focus on was the fact that I painted the Ukraine flag upside down. Let's be real here. Megan has received a lot of criticism. However, she deserves it because she's the one that has caused it by putting herself out there on such a frequent basis. And I'm sure part of the breakdown of Meghan and Harry's marriage, because we all know that it is breaking down, is going to be partially to blame of the circumstances that they were put in, such as the death of Prince Philip, the death of the Queen. I mean, real life events that they saw as an inconvenience hindering their success. And in parallel to Diana, Meghan's going to see this as a unique pressure, just as how Diana saw some of these unique pressures she had with Prince Charles. This next part of the interview, I believe this is what we're witnessing now. So Martin Bashir asks, you're effectively living separate lives, yet in public, there's this appearance of this happily married royal couple. How was this regarded by the royal family? So take out the royal family part. Diana then says, I think everybody was very anxious because they could see there were complications but didn't want to interfere, but were there, made it known that they were there if required. Then it was asked, do you think it was accepted that one could live effectively two lives, one in private and one in public? And she replies, no, because again, the media was very interested about our setup, inverted commas. When we went abroad, we had separate apartments, albeit we were on the same floor. So, of course, that was leaked and that caused complications. I could honestly see that this is where we'll hear about Harry staying at a hotel in L.A. or in San Francisco while he was working for Better Up. I think this is where we will find out some indication as to how how long they've been separated. That's if they are separated. Personally, I believe that they are, but, you know, many still say that they're together living happily ever after. Now, this part of the interview, Diana's talking about how the book that Charles had released affected their relationship. I can totally see Megan talking about spare in this manner. It's the question, what happened after the book was published? Diana replies, well, we struggled along, we did our engagements together, and in our private life, it was obviously turbulent. Did things come to a head? Yes, slowly, yes. My husband and I, we discussed it very calmly. We could see what the public were requiring. They wanted clarity of a situation that was obviously becoming intolerable. So what happened? So we got the lawyers together, we discussed separation. Obviously, there were a lot of people to discuss it with. 
prime minister, her majesty, and then it moved itself, so to speak. Then it was asked, by the December of that year, as you say, you'd agreed to a legal separation. What were your feelings at the time? And Diana replies, deep, deep, profound sadness. Because we had struggled to keep it going, but obviously we'd both run out of steam. And in a way, I suppose it could have been a relief for us both that we'd finally made up our minds. But my husband asked for the separation and I supported it. And here we go. This is the story of where Megan will say that, oh, we have been going in two separate directions. You know, he wanted to go focus on Africa and doing all that stuff. And she'll talk about wanting her career back and go into how much she gave up already and pretty much make Harry look like a selfish prick. She's going to definitely make him look like the jerk out of all of this. She's going to be like, yes, I didn't want to give up on our marriage. I tried. As you can see, it was at marriage counseling, hence the strategic photo showing her all stressed. And then she will say, nope, you know, I was willing to work through it, but Harry wanted out. And who is she going to blame for her multiple failures? Definitely Harry and most likely somehow rope the royal family into it. I'm sure, just as Diana thought that there was a campaign being waged against her, Megan probably thinks the reason why she has failed every corner has been because of the royal family and having influence, not because she doesn't have any talent, because the whole world is against her. So Diana says that she did believe that there was a campaign, and then she explains and says, I was the separated wife of the Prince of Wales. I was a problem, full stop. Never happened before. What do we do with her? I could totally see now this is where Meghan would interject. Well, the family wouldn't allow me to be at the bedside with the queen while she was dying and hold my husband's hand. They didn't want me at the coronation and Harry didn't stand up for me and demand that I be there because I'm his wife. Then she'll probably get into, I have two children that are in the line of succession and they should know their heritage. You see where this is going, right? I'm sure Megan will throw in somewhere if she does a type of interview that Harry then became jealous of her and her connections within Hollywood and he really didn't have a place there and he felt Megan was a threat because he couldn't handle a strong woman. And the next thing you know, we're going to hear that she's painting him as lazy and didn't want to work. And that's the reason why they only produce 12 podcasts. She's going to put all the blame on him. And finally, I thought that this question that was asked Diana in the interview, very similar to what I could see being asked of Megan. So the question that was asked was, up until you came into this family, the monarchy seemed to enjoy an unquestioned position at the heart of British life. Do you feel that you're at all to blame for the fact that survival of the monarchy is now a question that people are asking? And Diana replies, no, I don't feel blame. I mean, once or twice, I've heard people say to me that, you know, Diana's out to destroy the monarchy which has bewildered me because why would I want to destroy something that is my children's future? So here's the thing, guys. I could see Megan taking this question and answer and using it for her own because technically we know deep down inside she wants the monarchy burned to the ground, but she's not going to say that on national television. And she will play it off as if she had done nothing wrong. Honestly, I don't see Meghan having very much left. I mean, aside from taking photos with people that she pays for services, I don't see she has any other option in order to make money. And I do think the reason why WME is sticking it out with her is because a type of separation, divorce is rumored and is looming. And that could be a lot of money for the divorce settlement, whatever money. And I think it will be a lot of money for whoever gets to land the interview with her. Let's not forget that there most likely will be book deals. And then on top of it, maybe she'll even sell the rights to this soap opera in some type of film deal. If she does launch her website again, then she can play off of this newfound Megan's got her groove back type vibe, right? As a single parent, right? I mean, there's a lot of money for her to be made here 
if she does divorce Harry, which I think that's the direction that she is going to have to go in order to find another rich man, which I'm sure she already has her eyes set on one. She just needs to cut this one loose. As far as the invisible kids go, I believe if the price is right, she will give them up and allow Harry to take them back to the UK so they could be raised there. I believe that these two children, sadly, their mother doesn't have the time for them or is interested in taking care of them. So why not give them some type of chance and buy her out? Which I think might end up happening. And what Megan may do, I can honestly see her do it. She'll do a Dorian disappear for 10 years. And then as the kids are older into young adults, she will then creep her way back into their life and then somehow manipulate them to get her claws back into the royal fold somehow. I can see her planning that. I mean, if Doria went away for 10 years and then came back and now she's got allegedly $9 million in the bank, why can't Megan do the same? You know what I mean? Anyhow, what do you guys think? I truly believe that we are in this divorce era and some of the things that we see Megan doing are quite parallel to some of the things that Diana was doing. So, you know, it could be we're headed down that path. The question is when and how is it going to happen? So definitely leave your thoughts below as to how do you think they will communicate this news to the world? Do you think they will give it to People magazine or do you think they'll announce it via their Archwell website? One thing is for sure, we do know that if there is an announcement, Megan will get the most bang for her buck and make sure that this news is global and is considered breaking. Definitely looking forward to reading your thoughts. As always, I will be back with more content, but until then, please be safe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye! I was such a fraud! <laughs>